Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about this that I designed up for my USB battery holder. So one of the things that I've done is I've also started up a photography channel. So I have the link down below and probably a card up there throughout the video. Now, as part of this, one of the things that I do is a lot of time-lapse photography with, uh, for example, the EM1. This is a great 4K time-lapse camera with Dai, which uh, I've done a review on my drone channel, etc. Now, the thing is, these take a lot of power because time-lapses take a long time, right? So I've got this uh, 10,000 mAh per hour USB battery that I picked up. And this is a great battery, and, but the problem is, is I, when I connect it, you know, obviously via USB cable to the camera on a tripod, what do I do with the battery? So I came up with a brilliant idea. Why don't I 3D print something to hold the battery to the tripod? And that's what I've done, and here it is. So i tell you what, I'm going to share a little bit how I did this in Inkscape, and then took it into Tinkercad, and then 3D printed it. So let's hop into the computer, and then once we're done there, we'll come back to the bench. Okay, so we're in the computer, and we have Inkscape fired up. As you can see, I've already got a rough design of my battery holder here. And most of the aspects I used in the design, I've shared in other uh, Inkscape workflow tutorials, so please check out the playlist for that. However, there are a couple tips I'm going to share with you in this design that you can use in some of your designs uh, if you're looking to do something similar. So the first thing is I've set up multiple layers up, up here, and I've covered that out in a couple different episodes. Uh, and I have my scanned layer down here as layer one. Now I'm going to move this guy up out of the way. He's on, he's on the top layer. And what I've done is I've sketched out the battery uh, shape onto a piece of graph paper. Now the graph paper is a little important because I'm going to use this um, intersection point up here. So I'm going to take uh, a rectangle and I'm going to draw this rectangle over top of this. Now I'm going to match this. Now you notice that I've now matched the sides here and here. Now I'm going to go up here to the roundness and what what's going to happen is I'm going to adjust this until I match the underlying trace. So right there I go. So now I've used the RY function up here to match this and now I have my basic outline. So what I'm going to do now is from this outline I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off my uh, graph layer because I don't need that any longer. Now this is the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this over and uh, I'm going to now take this and what I want to do is I want to have, I'm going to increase this uh, by five millimeters all the way around. So I've got 78.7 so this is going to make it 83.7 uh, wide and then I need to add five here. So this is going to make it 28465, 28465 and now I've got my outer diameter. Now what I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to fill it and I'm just going to give it a gray uh, so I can kind of see it. Now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take my inner diameter over top of here and overlay it. Now before I do my path on it I'm going to take my uh, outside layer that I'm going to do this subtraction from and I'm going to go to sorry object up here and I'm going to say lower to bottom. So by lowering it to bottom, it's going to take the difference when I select the top one. Now before I do this, now that I have it on the bottom, I'm going to select both and then I'm going to do align. And then I'm going to align vertically and horizontally so I got it nicely set. So again, now when I select this, the subtract, uh, subtract E and the subtract door. And then what I'm going to do is go up here to path and then I'm going to go difference and boom now I have this. Now if I wouldn't have lowered that down to the bottom the whole thing would have disappeared. So if you're having that problem in Inkscape that's why. Now a couple different uh, pieces that I sort of want to talk about. So you see this now kind of taking shape. So one of the things to note is when we took this inside measurement, I'm going to turn this back on so, uh, so you can see. So this is my pencil tracing the outside. So this is going to actually be larger than the battery case. So the battery is going to slip right through it. So what I've done now is I've added these pads or inserts. And the way I have done this is I've simply taken a circle and extended it out. 
sort of like this uh, and replicated these in here three times and then simply did a union on them sort of like this so I've done union and boom so now these pads are going to push against the the battery and hold it tight inside the case or that's our hope anyway now the next piece is is this uh, for the tripod now you notice I beef this up a little bit more because this is going to take constant bending you know to pop it on and pop it off and if we use a lighter um, uh, you know a thinner wall here as we do here because this all all it has to do is cinch the battery very simple and it's kind of static this is a little bit dynamic so it actually has to hold on to the tripod and we'll be removing it on and off so I've doubled up the material here so I've actually gone five millimeters here where I've actually done 2.5 millimeters here so kind of something to think about the other piece is, is I've done affiliate here uh, to provide extra resiliency uh, to push against this as it kind of goes on and off so to keep resiliency in the TPU over time and then I've also added um, some I don't know what you call these lips wings something or another uh, to kind of strengthen the opening of this as it kind of goes on and off if I wanted to get fancy I could have probably tapered these and everything else but I think it's pretty good this way so this kind of covers some of the basic designs. And again, I've really just used a lot of the path commands and structuring this, you know, scanning my outside. So hopefully this gave you a few tips and also pointers if you're running into problems with Inkscape and doing some of your unions and the object disappearing. Now, what I've also done is I've taken this into Tinkercad and I've extruded this. And so as you can see here, here is the object. I've made it about 26 millimeters higher, approximately an inch, to give, to give a good surface area, uh, mainly for the tripod mount uh, for the, you know, the main battery too, because we don't want it to tip. We want it to be on there straight, and we also want to give it enough surface area on the tripod. And I figured an inch, yeah, that should be pretty good. So I'm going to print this out with about, um, uh, you know, 15% infill. Doesn't need a lot of infill because, again, it's pretty much a static structure. It's just going to kind of hang on the tripod, right? So we don't need a lot of support, and TPU is pretty resilient. And while this is a big battery pack, this should hold it no problem. So tell you what, let's go print this and meet back at the bench and take a look at the end product. Okay, so you've seen how I've uh, printed it, or sorry, not printed it, designed it. Some of the tips. Now, a lot, as I mentioned while we were at the computer, a lot of that I've already covered in other Inkscape workflow episodes. So if you're interested in that, please check out that playlist. It's a great playlist. I think Ink Inkscape is a very powerful tool to do mock-ups in and to create stuff like this, uh, especially. So I really like the way that this turned out because, long story short, short is as I talked about in the design um, and this is kind of hard to do around the camera it's, it's actually easier while they standing up but you can see that the battery mounts right to the neck of the tripod obviously it's going to fall over uh, but you know as it's standing up I can also place the uh, and on here the other pieces it also I can pop it on the leg well, actually it'd probably be better if I go on this leg above the foam padding and so the foam padding will support and it'll hang there if I can get it in frame here um, and you can see it and plug it in so it'll rest on the tripod as the tripod's uh, sitting there and again when I want to go I just pop it off and it comes right off so it's kind of awkward trying to show you this on the bench because there's very little area here versus uh, setting it up but this has been a great addition um, you know, so I do have to fine tune it. it. This this one is a little bit loose. I'm going to tighten it up. And this is kind of, you do have to do a few iterative processes uh, to get it right. But I really like the pads for holding it down that I put in. Uh, and I'm just going to shrink this down by like about a half a millimeter or so. Not very much. It, it's pretty snug, so it, it does work pretty good. So hopefully you learned something from this. And, and again, if you're into photography, there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, with the 3D printer and photography. And I'll probably do some of that in future episodes. And I'll probably also do some of that over on my photography channel. So if you're interested in photography and videography, I highly suggest subscribing to that channel. So make sure you check it out. Um, 
Also, don't forget, Swag Shop's going to be up there. I'll have this probably out on Thingiverse with a link to this battery, because I really love this battery. 10,000 milliamps lasts a long time. Uh, and then, hey, subscribe button's going to be coming up over there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit me up in the comments below if you got other ideas that I should be doing like this. Happy to hear about them. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.